You're checking in with the doctor for the greatest fantasy baseball podcast in the world. Starring your hosts, Dr. Fantasy. I'm ready to rock and roll today. And Rydog. A Harrison masturbator. Welcome to Doc and Dog, your fantasy baseball geniuses. Presented by the Fantasy Holics. What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Doc and Dog presented by the Fantasy Holics. And we are in the middle of our short stop mini series. Today, we're going to be talking about our rankings number six through 10. So, my name is Jordan Jica, aka Dr. Fantasy, and I'm here with my co host, Rye Dog. And this is our second to last installment. So, make sure you check out our short top five short stops in the next episode. But for today, we are going to number 10, which is Manny Machado of the Padres. You had him 9th. I have him 11th. Last season, he batted 256 with 81 runs scored, 32 home runs, 85 RBIs, and 5 stolen bases. You know, and we talked about this in the miniseries, but, I mean, he was a first-round pick a few years ago. So he has the ability, and he is one of the most talented players shortstops in all of baseball so I still think he has that upside to get back to that level especially with the Padres improving the reason that I don't have him higher is I do think that there's players above him that are younger number one and guys that have even more upside than what Machado has but to me right now at this point in his career I think Machado is a safer pick at shortstop than a lot of the other players so um, a pick that I really can't argue with, and he's still a starting caliber shortstop. Yeah, and I think last year was fluky for Machado, and I say fluky with the batting average. Um, I think he's going to jump back into the 90 RBIs, 100 runs scored as well. And I think his uh, batting average will come up an extra 20 points, so I can see him more of a 275 batting average. I think uh, his, I think being in the, in the San Diego Padres, I think his first year there, I think he, he was uh, – kind of getting used to the system and everything. And I think another year there, getting a full year with Tatis, to getting a full year with that uh that lineup in general, I think he'll I think he'll improve this year. And he's going in uh pick around pick seventy ish for uh his ADP. And I think that's tremendous value still. So I don't really think that's necessarily a safe pick. I think that's a highway robbery because he was a guy that was a top twenty pick two years ago. Yeah. Yep. Number nine in our rankings, I hate to say this name, but it's Jonathan VR. He last Aww. season had a 274 average, scored 111 runs, 24 home runs, 72 RBIs, and 40 stolen bases. You know, it's one of those things we talk a lot about situation and how you know, he's with the Marlins now. They don't have a great lineup, but he was with the Orioles last season and he was fine. So. You know, I can't really even use that argument against him that he's not in a strong lineup. I will say that I don't think he's going to provide 20 home run value most season, and almost 25 home runs last year. I think he's more of a, you know, 15 to 20 guy. I think that power was a little fluky in my opinion. But, I mean, there weren't many guys in the majors last year to hit 20 home runs and f- steal 40 bases. So he offers a lot of value if you're looking for speed and runs scored. So... Um, just for that reason, he kind of offers a unique skill set, which is one of the reasons I like him. As far as his value goes, I think he's going around pick 45 to 50 right now. I wouldn't say that's tremendous value for him. I think it's fair, but overall, he's going to get you steals, score a lot of runs, and I can't argue with him as a starting shortstop for you. Yeah, he's a back-end uh, shortstop one for me. I think, uh, I mean, he didn't really have much of a better lineup with Baltimore. If anything, I think it's a, uh, it was a worse lineup than Baltimore. But the ballpark was definitely more hitter-friendly by far. <laughs> so I think that's what people are scared of is the ballpark, not necessarily the offense for me. So when you look at it, the art can hold his own. He proved it last year. Um, I don't think he'll hit 25 home runs or 20-ish home runs. I think he'll be more of a 15 home run guy. But uh, his average will be there. His stolen bases will be there. He has no problem getting on base. He has a tremendous swing. He makes great contact with the ball usually. So and his stolen bases will be there. I think it might be a, a, few, a few less home runs, but I would still take him as a borderline shortstop one if he's available. Yep. Number eight in our rankings is Javier Baez, and we actually both had him ranked eighth. 
last season he batted 281, scored 89 runs, 29 home runs, 85 RBIs, 11 stolen bases. And uh, I personally don't love where he's going in drafts. He goes as one of the top few shortstops in the top three rounds. I think that's a little high for him, but there's no doubt that he's one of the most talented shortstops in the game. And I think that's really the theme with a lot of these shortstops that we're getting into is you really can't go wrong with a lot of them. To me, it's just a matter of where you draft them and what kind of value you're getting out of them. You know, Baez is in a good lineup. He has home run ability, hits for a solid average, drives and runs, gets you a few steals. So there's really not much to say poorly about him, but I just think you have to pick your spot with a shortstop and not reach on one. I'd agree with that. Um, I think Baez doesn't really offer as much steel uh, as steel potential. He's more of a four guy category. He does he does great with the four categories he does offer. I've never been a, a bias guy, but I mean, he, his numbers are definitely there. But you, I'm taking one of the short steps that offers a uh, five uh, everything, the five star categories. If I'm taking one as early as the second or third round, early second, uh, early third. So, I mean, I would I would wait later on bias just because there's a short stop around earlier that just offers that extra category by a lot. So. Mm-hmm. That's where I stand on it. Yep. Number seven is the Yankees' Gliber Torres. We both had him seventh as well, so we had the same seven and eight here. Last season, he batted 278, had 96 runs scored, 38 home runs, 90 RBIs, five stolen bases. He goes in that same category that you just mentioned, doesn't steal a ton of bases. He was one of the more powerful shortstops in the league last year. Looks like he was second among all shortstops and home runs. So offers a ton of power in a good lineup, drives in runs. Um, 278 is a solid average, almost scored 100 runs. So I think in a full season, in a good lineup, right around 100 runs scored, 35 or so home runs is reasonable. And he's still really young, though. I guess that's the one note I'll make on him. He still has a lot of ability to improve, and you know we'll see if he's able to keep up that level of production. Yeah, and I, I think he'll keep up the level of production. I, I like him a little better than Baez, just because uh, uh, Torres offers the second base eligibility, which I love. So, um, I mean, he's going to get drafted as a second base, but you're not going to take him as your starting shortstop when second base is so much weaker. But I think if you get a, a healthy judge and a healthy Stanton in there, and, and if not Cherry and Butts, that Yankees lineup was always healthy, he would definitely have 100, run, 100 RBIs as well. And then to end it today, our sixth ranked shortstop. And we actually had a three-way tie here for our four, five, and six spots. So we'll go with number six here as uh, Xander Bogarts from the Red Sox. I had him ranked higher than you. I have him as my third shortstop overall, which is much higher than most people. You had him sixth, which is right about where he's been going. Last season, he batted 309 with 110 runs scored. 33 home runs, 117 RBIs, and four stolen bases. Not really a steals guy. He's betting a top of that Red Sox lineup, which is a has a very talented top half of their lineup. But I just love the over 300 average. I personally don't think it was fluky. I think him and Devers are going to be the real deal for the next 10 years. One of the few shortstops to score 110 runs. He actually led all shortstops and RBIs last year with 117, so he just has a ton of run production, and even though he doesn't offer the steal potential, I just love him in that lineup, and I love his talent. Yeah, his talent's good. Um, I think Mookie Betts' departure is going to be a bit of a factor, I think, because that's the leadoff guy that Bogart's uh, respected three-hole hitter. Um, he would drive in, so I think um, I think Danny will find out who's going to have that leadoff spot. I just think that's a it's a huge blow to that offense. I don't think it's going to make Bogarts not a top six shortstop. I think the top six you could really put in any fashion, and it's definitely a respectable ranking regardless. But Betts leaving was the uh, it was the cherry on the Sunday for me to put Bogarts as my six shortstop. Yep. I agree. To me, and I already mentioned, it's just a matter of value at this point. So uh, I think that's all that we have for today. These were our shortstops ranked 6 through 10. So thank you guys for tuning in. 
It's been another episode of Doc and Dog. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for our last installment, our top five short stops. And if you don't already, make sure you like the Fantasy Holics on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at FantasyHolics1. And check out our new website, thefantasyholics.com. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time. We will see you later. Bye-bye.